Close your eyes. 603 score and 6. 603 score and 6. 603 score and 6. Now we are all in this. Close your eyes. Uh oh, ladies and gentlemen, I am in trouble again. Why am I always in trouble? I'm trending on Twitter for saying something unsayable. Look at this number one trend. It reads Candace Owens rejects Earth theories, faces backlash. How am I ever going to survive this? But also, I have to admit that that trend is kind of cool because I'm trending under science, and that is a first. It's got me feeling like CO the science gal. Bam, bam. Christ is king. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I know I'm having way too much fun. I have to stop. Our space information is coming from NASA. NASA. Warner Von Braun was the director of all six moon missions, and he's a Is that not a comic book? That's a comic comic book. A comic book. My fellow Nasdaqos, I am sorry to say I am leaving you to join the elite. Operation Paperclip. In the United States of America. Operation Paperclip. My people in Germany, all they want is freedom and peace. We want to welcome you to the U.S. of A. We must divert their attention. I'm going to make so much f***ing money. It's crazy. To brainwash a nation, we will need animation. I want to bring my technology of airplane models. I want to work with Walt. I want to see the best people. We need to get the indoctrination started. If people believe an airplane can go to the moon, we might be able to do it. To brainwash a nation. I will need help. We will need animation. Please bring in help. United States of America. And action. Aw, oh, jeez. Who hired these guys? Jesus Christ, these f guys can't people act. People will fall for it. People will fall for it. The people must know. And the heavens declare the glory of God in his firmament. For sure, if this can be worth The people must know. All right, so whenever I'm trending over something that's just not that big of a deal, I know that there's something the establishment wants to hide. It's it's called a media overreaction. And that always means that there's something that you've accidentally landed upon that they don't really want to be exposed. And this is sort of what happened when on Monday, you know, I did this whole long episode about why I am now rejecting the cult of science. So many things that they've lied to us about vaccines, birth control, people that are being injured. And we just accept everything the experts say. And we're sacrificing our own bodies. It just feels strange. It feels wrong. When you look further in the history, they just keep lying and getting away with it. What I said was that science has become a pagan faith. Yes, that's what I actually believe. And I said, if I don't get it from the Bible and I can't observe it with my own eyes, I I don't stand it as the truth. Another example of a recent media overreaction, of course, was when Tucker sat down with Joe Rogan and he started talking about World War II and how we shouldn't have dropped nukes on, you know, praying Christians. And they freaked out, like questioning the nuke thing is not allowed. And again, I thought, "Mm, Tucker must be landing on some truth that they don't want exposed. And lately we are learning that they've lied to us about virtually everything pertaining to World War II. But it is this piece of the Tucker conversation with Joe Rogan that I keep in insisting that you guys commit to memory. So take a listen one more time. There is a whole world that we can't see that acts on people, a supernatural world that's acting on us all the time for good and bad. Every society has thought this before ours. In Mm -hmm. fact, every society in all recorded history has thought that until, I'll be specific, August 1945, when we dropped the atom bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and all of a sudden the West is just officially secular, we're God, there is no God but us. And that's the world that we have grown up in, but that's an anomaly. Like no one else has ever thought that. There's never been a society that thought that. Every other society has assumed, and they've had all kinds of different explanations and the details differ, but the core idea does not differ, it never has differed from caves until now, that we're being acted on by spiritual forces at all times. To be clear, that is what I believe made the media freak out. They dressed it up in, oh, the morality of World War II and the bomb. 
But I think it was actually this. I'm starting to see a trend that every time you start talking about the Bible, you start talking about God, you start talking about spiritualism and recognizing that America and the West is an anomaly, that there are spiritual forces that are working on people at all times, the media panics because the media, in my view, uh, is a bit satanic. I, I genuinely believe this. And so did one of the people that was watching this trend. I had a random user reach reach out and say, yeah, the reason they're freaking out is because NASA is satanic. The origins of NASA are satanic. And I went, what? What are you talking about? And OMG, you guys, buckle up. What I'm about to tell you, you're not even going to believe me, but you can just research this. You don't even have to go down a dark hole on Reddit. You can just literally open Wikipedia. It is so in our faces, and yet we don't learn about this. And now I understand why they are very upset with me. So you may have heard of a man named Aleister Crowley. If you haven't, I'll provide you with some brief spark notes. Aleister Crowley was an Englishman. He was also a drug abuser. He was a bisexual who is credited with heavily influencing the eventual counterculture revolution of the 60s in America. Free love, free love. Yeah, that book, Chaos. Things got weird and satanic in the 60s in America. And America is where this Englishman, Aleister Crowley, eventually moved. But what he is most famous for is black magic. He was an occultist who pledged his allegiance to demons. He believed that he could summon demons, okay? The story goes that when he was 13 years old, he read the book of Revelation in the Bible, and he became inspired, not by Jesus Christ, but by the seven-headed beast that is ridden by the whore of Babylon. So in case you are, are somebody that's not familiar with the Bible and Revelations, they talk about this seven-headed beast that rules over every tribe and people and tongue and nation, Okay. So it's satanic. It's a satanic beast. When Alistair got older, he started a religious cult, a satanic cult known as the Lima. Crowley believed that the number of the beast 666 was significant. He believed that humanity was entering in a new eon and that his religious motto, which was do what thou wilt, would rule it, right? He believed that actually he could create this beast and rule over nations by practicing rituals. He routinely practiced sex rituals. He believed in masochistic and sadistic sex, believed in free love, and he was very much connected to the elite in America. He was just openly publishing articles for Vanity Fair because he was best friends with their editor, and many of the elite in our society were his followers and believers. A Satanist. This is a fact. You can look this up. One such follower was a man named Jack Parsons, another wealthy young man. And here's what you should know about this time period. Before Jack Parsons enters the scene in America, the scientific consensus was that we would never enter space, that that was an impossibility. But this rich kid, who also happens to be an occultist and who also would perform sex rituals and blood sacrifice to summon demons, well, now he expressed the belief that they could fundamentally alter humanity. And he had a vision. He said, no, we can make this work. We can can get to space. Check out this article. Again, this is is published. You can can look this up yourself. Here's the headline. Sex, rocket science, and Satanism. Meet NASA's real hidden figures. And I'm going to read you directly from this article because it's so unbelievable. My jaw was on the floor. I'm skimming through it because it's way too long. It would make this show forever, but we will link it. And you absolutely must read it. It reads, quote, Jack Parsons is barely acknowledged on NASA's website, and he's the man who made rockets a reality and co-founded the agency's Jet Propulsion Lab, JPL, home to missions which paved the way for the Apollo programs and continue to explore Mars and outer space today. If Parsons' life story was a film script, it would be dubbed preposterous. He invented jet propulsion technology in the face of industry-wide derision that rockets would never exist, but was also a senior figure in the occult and invited L. Ron Hubbard, yes, L. Ron Hubbard of Scientology, into his confidence and riotous sex parties. Parsons tried to sell his government-funded inventions to Israel before winding up dying at the age of 37 in a self-created explosion, leaving a mass of disturbing materials for his friends to discover. Here's the remarkably twisting tale of his life. 
So he too, like Alistair, like Alistair Crow- Crowley, was just interested in the demonic when he was young. He also liked science fiction. His story begins when he's 14 years old. And as a fan of science fiction, he decides to begin experiments that would eventually shape his life with his school friend named Edward Foreman. The pair took to playing with rockets in Parsons' back garden and soon created their own solid-fueled rockets. It was here that Jack would begin to link science with Satanism. Parsons later claimed he first summoned the devil at age 13 in a terrifying experience. Jack and Ed would later attend and then drop out of college. In 1936, they met a 22-year-old Frank Molina, who was a grad student who shared their passion for defying gravity. When Parsons and Molina met, their enthusiasm for rocketry and space travel bonded them like a Masonic handshake, one writer says. I'm sure it did. Molina helped by getting their research funded by Caltech, and their experiments were quite dangerous. There were a lot of explosions. And so he and his friends became known as the Suicide Squad. They decided to move their experiments into the desert. And this part is just amazing. I'm going to read you a direct quotation here. Once again, Jack's fascinations with the occult and rocketry collided. In the desert lands outside of Caltech, there is a former river channel called Arroyo Seco. It is flanked on both sides by rock, one of which is called Devil's Gate thanks to its shape of a horned head. Some locals believed the mouth of Arroyo Seco was a portal to other dimensions. But for Parsons, the area had two uses. He tested rockets there, but years later, he would return to conduct ceremonies and rituals with other occultists in the same spot. By golly, guys, what then happens is that on Halloween of all nights in 1936, they have a scientific breakthrough after they accidentally set fire to the oxygen line of their small rocket motor. And although it didn't launch, Melita and his team were enthused. They said this test was successful. He wrote to his parents, and NASA would later consider that experiment, which happened again on Halloween, to be the first rocket experiment of what would later become the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. So there was a method to the Suicide Squad's madness. They had created a fuel that would burn cleanly and be stored without exploding. And the scientific community was skeptical, but the U.S. Army saw potential and they offered to fund the TRIO's project in 1939. So great. Uh, Satanic little cult meets the United States government. Thereafter, Jack's credibility in the scientific community soared, and so did his interest in the supernatural and the demonic. He was taken to a meeting of OTO, which stands for the Order of Templi Orientis, an occult society in Los Angeles in 1939, and he became fully engrossed. If you're wondering what OTO is, it was a group that was formed by and followed the teachings of Aleister Crowley. Again, the heroin-addicted sexual deviant and occultist who was considered the wickedest man in the world by the press in his native England. Parsons went from just reading Crowley's writings to becoming the Beast 666's pen pal. Within a few years, Crowley considered Parsons his American protege. Parsons was barely in his mid-20s, and he was not at all concerned with keeping his personal and professional proclivities separate. The article tells us that the California Tech ran stories at the time that reported that he chanted Crowley's hymn before he lit his rockets. They're just chanting satanic demonic hymns before they lit these rockets, guys. This is not a joke. This is not a test. This is history that is hiding right under your nose. By 1941, he and his wife, Helen, who he had married five years earlier, were indicted into what was known as the Agape Lodge, which was a branch of the church which practiced Crowley's religion of Thelemic magic. Then they came into money. They founded the Aerojet Engineering Corporation, which became the world's largest manufacturer of rockets and propellants. And within 20 years, it had become a $700 million a year business. Parsons was the vice president. A year later, he co-founded the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. So now that he's rich, what's, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You've got government contacts. You've got money. You're having sex rituals. Well, he just is going to make the whole demonic sex rituals bigger because obviously it has led to success, summoning demons, believing in Satan. And what he did next was he took out a lease on a mansion in Pasadena's Millionaire's Row, 
on Orange Grove Avenue and invited fellow Thelemites to live communally in what was known as the Parsonage. This is really kind of the the earliest iteration of a hippie commune, if you ask me. And of course, if you've read that book, Chaos, you just are going, OMG, Candace. So what did they do at the Parsonage? Well, the Parsonage had 10 bedrooms, but its greatest asset, for Parsons at least, according to this article, was its additional three-bedroom coach house, which became an agape lodge. The commune was self-sufficient, maintaining allotments and livestock to eat and use for blood rituals. Those were the the tame events. The blood rituals were the tame events that unfolded at the parsonage. The residents of the Orange Grove made frequent complaints to the police about loud music, drug taking, and the naked pregnant women that were dancing through fire in the garden. This is totally normal stuff, guys. (laughs) Just, you know, uh, coming up with NASA and jet propulsion, you sometimes got to have a naked pregnant woman dancing in the garden through fire. Parsons would greet people at the door with a live snake wrapped around his shoulders. And when the police would turn up, he would tell them, hey, look, I'm a Caltech scientist. There's no trouble going on here. I'm connected. I'm connected to the government. I've got money. You leave me alone. And I guess they just left him alone. Somehow this is going to get creepier, guys, because in the mid 40s, Jack decided that he wanted to push the barriers of his Satanism a little more, pushing the barriers of Thelemic magic to a new level. He wanted to take the spirit of Babylon, the goddess that they worshipped, and instill it into a human being. In short, he wanted to impregnate a woman that he believed to have certain powers so that she would give birth to a child that would embody the forces of Babylon. So between January and March of 1946, yep, we're coming now to the end of World War II. So think about what Tucker said. Hubbard, again, that's L. Ron Hubbard of Scientology, assisted Parsons in a series of rituals that they called Babylon Working. And on January 18th, a woman named Marjorie Cameron, who had red hair, turned up at the parsonage and he believed that this is it. This is the scarlet woman that he had called forth via his rituals. The moment uh, had arrived. It is done, Parsons told Hubbard. I returned home and found a young woman answering the requirements waiting for me. I thought I had the most morbid imaginations, but it seems I have not. If you're wondering who that redheaded woman was, she was a woman that had been recently discharged from the Navy. She had a free spirit. She happened to have red hair. She was happy to have sex with Parsons uh, because, again, they promoted free love. Hubbard was then promoted to a position of high priesthood mere weeks after being exposed to the Thelemic black magic, and he encanted rite and ritual. Some of it he did completely off of the cuff. What was the result? Well, afterwards, on March 6th, Parsons wrote enthusiastically to Aleister Crowley. He wrote, quote, I can hardly tell you or decide how much I want to write. I am under command of extreme secrecy. I have had the most important, devastating experience of my life. Crowley responded to him, writing, quote, You have me completely puzzled by your remark. I thought I had the most morbid imagination, but it seems I have not. I cannot form the slightest idea what you can possibly mean. Well, what Parsons meant was he had created a moon child. That's what they were trying to create, a moon child as their final experiment, creating a child of Babylon. The ending of the story, by the way, which we're coming to, gets a little bit shady. They say that apparently after all of that, after impregnating this woman, after chanting after the sex rituals, after driving this woman forth, that she agreed to have an abortion. Parson then came under the investigation of the FBI. They believe that he had been planning to give his rocket plans to the newly founded Israeli government in exchange for admission to the country and the chance of a new life abroad. Then he died rather mysteriously, Jack Parsons, in an explosion. Some claim he was suicided. Some claim that it was an accident. Some claim that he never died and actually he just disappeared. Honestly, we'll never know. We don't need to peddle in conspiracy theory because in this story, truth is stranger than fiction. There you have it, guys. That's the origins of NASA and the program, the Jet Propulsion Program, the, you know, we're going to make it to space mission. But don't worry, it would be totally crazy for you guys to think that Satan worshipers are still involved in NASA. Obviously, after it got started, 
they went totally clean. You know, everything was been above board. Nobody believes in this stuff anymore. And uh, yeah, everything's great and everything is normal. And now suddenly, I guess if the goals of Aleister Crowley was to create a society that would deceive the entire world, now suddenly in the West, we don't believe any of this stuff. We look back on that story of a man who dedicated his entire life and an entire religious cult to summoning demons, saying that they had summoned them successfully, um, that they had experiences with Satan, and they were just being imaginative. Yeah, no. How, Satan, Satan can't possibly be real, right? So yeah, think back to what Tucker is saying, that suddenly after this period, exactly when this was going on, when people were following this religion and believing in Satan, and then suddenly... Americans just kind of got on board the atheist train. And we just said, yeah, no, we don't believe in any of that stuff in spiritualism anymore. Instead, what we believe in is science, rationality. And God forbid someone like Candace start talking about the Bible. Oh my God, she there she is. She's saying she doesn't just trust the science. Yeah, I'm saying actually a little bit more than that. I, I think um, science has become a bit satanic. You know, they're telling you to do things that are utterly satanic, sacrificing your children in the name of science because it's just a clump of cells. It's getting weird out there. And um, I'm sorry that I notice. That's all I'll say on that topic. Here is wisdom. Here is wisdom. Here is Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast. The beast. For it is the number of a man. And his number is 603 score and six. According to science and the satanic system, the earth is supposedly tilted at a 23.4 degree angle off vertical. And that leaves you at 66.6 .6 degrees off horizontal. Now what are the chances of that? You think this is just a coincidence? Take a look at this. Earth is supposedly orbiting around the sun and moving at 66,600 miles an hour. Another thing I want to point out here, let's take a look. Now let's take a look at this model with the Earth supposedly orbiting the sun. And of course, the moon orbiting Earth. And while this is all taking place, Earth is supposedly rotating. Let's take a look at this image here of Polaris, the North Star. Take a look at this model here. Now, explain to me, for anybody out there, how is it possible for the North Star or Polaris to remain constant above the supposed North Pole while it's orbiting around the Sun? It makes absolutely no sense because it doesn't happen does not take place. That's simple.
When I first made the correlations between Kabbalah and science, I was stunned. We do know that Isaac Newton had access to certain mystical texts, certain texts of the Kabbalah. Well, the Kabbalistic description of creation is coming from a single little point, from a speck, and of having matter form and time and space form all together at the very beginning. This sounds very much to me like the description of the Big Bang. I couldn't believe that the Kabbalists could derive these truths without really knowing any mathematics or physics. Sohar says those things, it could just have been a lucky guess, could just have been a lucky guess. Could just have been a lucky guess, I don't know. The Zohar's notion that light is a realm of no time and no space is quite consistent with special relativity. It's rather amazing, this uncanny reflection of some of the most advanced cosmology coming from our satellites, coming from our atom smashers, coming from our blackboards that are mirrored in the Zohar and ancient Kabbalistic texts. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see just how evil NASA is. Let's take a look at the Antarctic and Arctic circles. Oh, just like that. 66.6 .6 degrees north and 66.6 .6 degrees south. Now let's go over the diameter of the moon. This is a new one, I actually didn't know. It's 2,160 miles, but you take six times six times six, there you go, 2160. The surface temperature of Uranus. Oh, there you go, negative 216, which is six times six times six, 216. Oh, you thought we were done. Let's do Pluto's orbital velocity. Scroll down here, oh, there we go. 666, the speed of sound in knots. Speed of sound, oh, well, look at that. 666 knots. The Earth's circumference in nautical miles. Oh, 21,600. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Again, 600 times six times six. Another coincidence, 21,600. How far is Mars from the sun? 1.666 astronomical units. Now let's look at Ceres' synodic period. And just as you expected, 666. Again, the devil's in the details, ladies and gentlemen. Saturn's orbital distance in kilometers. Let's take a look at the numbers. Oh, 1,426,666,000. She's out of this world, the current commander of the International Space Station, about to break a big record tonight. Here's ABC's Gio Benitez. They call it the Peggy Factor, Mission Control's code word for the way superstar astronaut Peggy Whitson always gets the job done. I love it up here. Tonight, Commander Whitson making history with her record for any American. By the time she lands in September, her tally will be 666 days in space. Will be 666 days in space. 666 days in space. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. Take a look at this footage supposedly provided by ISS. This is nothing more than CGI. Nothing more than a cartoon. Nothing about this is real. And this is what you base your belief that we live on a spinning ball. This is complete garbage. There's an old saying in Tennessee, I know it's in Texas, probably in Tennessee, that says, fool me once. Shame on 
Shame on you. It fooled me. We can't get fooled again. And what you're seeing here is a mirage. We typically would not be able to see this from the Lake Michigan shore. We talked about this last night. Conditions are right on the lake. But we're actually seeing a mirage of the Chicago sky. That fake garbage. You get this. All CGI, computer animated. Looks like a video game. All lies. Time for you to wake up. Stop believing in fairy tales. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. And his number is six, six, six. around us, just as it appears if you look up and use your own eyes, your own senses, the vanishing point of perspective from your point of view, which is what the horizon line is. It is not the curvature of the earth, as you've been taught. They stole your mind. They stole my mind. You've been fed a false system. You've been shown CGI images with a ball earth with a horizon that curves. Of course, you can measure curvature if it actually existed. It's been tested over and over again and found to have no curvature whatsoever. You've just been lied to and shown pictures and you believe those. Science, in fact, shows that the earth is flat and motionless. Now, one thing I really want your generation to embrace is that the earth is a closed system. We cannot leave the earth. There's no place to go. I just recently gained my mind back. It's flat. That begs the question, hey, what the hell have you been showing us this ball for all this time? What have you been doing with our money? Did you guys go to space? Is evolution actually real? Did you guys just make this shit up? These are the questions we need to be asking. To be asking. To be the greatest asking. trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. I wear my heart on my sleeve. Don't wanna be fake, but I heard I should be ashamed. From the mouth of a snake, deep down, I'd rather feel. Show you something real. But there is power in my weakness. They can try to keep me silent, but I'm a shouting from the mountain. No, I'm not backing down. The devil is a liar. Easy now, he can try, but he won't deceive me. I can see, I can see right through him. 
He wants me to hide, he's the father of lies But I got an army on my side And when I back him down The devil is a liar The devil is a The shadow of death I will fear no evil Fear no evil He comes to kill, steal and destroy But I am quitting, I'm not backing down Not giving up, he can't hold me back Cause I run with the king and the truth is the devil Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. We cannot leave the Earth. Bringing the ocean itself down into the stadium. Oh, Simpson just broke this dream's reality wide open. <laughs>